God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. This is Robert Jenkins. How you doing? It's a Monday afternoon, 5.30 on time. As always, me and my wife like to start out by saying, please share this on your page. All you have to do is hit that share button and please invite people out to a word five days out of a week. Monday through Friday, we are on Facebook and you can find many uh, videos on YouTube and Instagram as well. I do have to upload some videos on YouTube. I haven't been able to get to it. I'm going to try to do that this week. But God bless you as always. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I had a great weekend. It was a great weekend. We spent time with the family. We had game night. And then I was able to go fishing yesterday. So it was a blessing. So as always, we love you. We thank God for your faithfulness and your loyalty and your consistency. And we thank God for um, what you do for us as far as listening. And we just thank God for what he's doing in your life. We're going to do a new teaching today. And it's basically called Walking in Spiritual Virtues. Walking in Spiritual uh, Virtues. I just believe God given us some, um, uh, how can I say it, some true applications to our lives. How to apply things to our lives. Some basic foundation, but everything that's basic is also deep at the same time. So we're going to do that today. So I'm going to give a couple more seconds for people to come on um, so we can walk right into this. We're we'll dealing with spiritual walking in spiritual virtues. We're coming out of Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 uh, through 5. I, I advise you to uh, please look at the whole chapter of First Peter, of Second Peter chapter 1. Read the whole thing and it will be a blessing to you. So let me give you a couple more seconds to see a couple more people. Uh, it's a Monday. And we're just going to give God praise for what he's doing. Amen. Come on, share that on your page. Invite people out. Go ahead and start inviting people out. Just want to know who's watching you live video. Swipe to the left to see your viewers. Okay. All right. Good to see Lisa, Yolanda. All right. Good. Sister Perry. All right. Good to see everybody. God bless you. God bless you. Okay. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for just a wonderful weekend that you have given us, Father. We just ask you, as always, to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher here. We submit to your will. We submit to your way. We give us clarity concerning this word. Challenge us until we change. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for how much you love us. And we're just excited about the life you have given us and how to live the life totally committed to you. In this particular teaching, we ask you to open our minds, free us from anything that hinders us from learning and growing. God, allow our, allow our life to increase today. Bring increase to our life. Bring increase to our life. Cause us to be fruitful. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you for all things. Amen. Good to see everybody out. God is good. Um, I try to always stay in tune with God. What I mean by that, I try to always keep my ears open to hear what God is saying. I think God is always speaking. Good to see you, Patricia. So good to see you, Londa. Uh, it's so, so important that you always have your ears open. God always wants to talk to you about your day. You never go a day by yourself. So if you understand that you've been given the Holy Ghost and a lot of back in the time when I was growing up, we put a lot of emphasis on speaking in tongues and speaking in tongues is one of the expressions of the Holy Ghost. But God wants you to understand the Holy Ghost is there to lead and guide you into all truth. And that truth is about Christ. And the more you know who Christ is, the more you know who you are, because you're made in the image and the likeness of God himself. The first Adam sinned, but the last Adam lived righteous. So because of the last Adam and because of Christ, we can know exactly how our life should be. That's so important. So the Holy Ghost speaks to you, and you want to listen to the Holy Ghost so he can give you revelatory word concerning your situation. You're not raising kids by yourself. You're not going to work by yourself. You're not marriage by yourself. You're not teaching in the school system by yourself. And God has an answer for anything that you're going through. So always understand that. And I always pray, Holy Spirit, have your way. Lead and guide me. Be so submissive to that and hear that and when you hear that God will speak to you and give you answers concerning your life my wife was at work today and she said God just spoke to her about her health and trust me for your health God does that the more you have conversation with God the more God moves I feel the anointing now even when I was praying and I already know what God wants me to teach about but God spoke to me in the middle of my prayer and said tell them that Joseph is coming
Tell them that Joseph is coming. And what I mean by them, Joseph, Joseph's name means increase. And God says, right while I was praying today, God says, tell them Joseph is coming, that increase is coming in your life. Now, I've been hearing that uh, almost like silently or sometimes as a film. I'll, I'll, I'll hear something in my spirit, but it's not an auto word. But I actually heard him say, the increase is coming, which means expect your increase. Expect for God. Listen, you didn't you didn't begin to take on these teachings and, and sacrifice your life and begin to give up some things and want to walk in, walk in the right path of God and God is not going to add increase. God is going to add increase into your life. So expect increase in your finance. Expect increase in your joy. Expect increase in your love. Expect increase in your clarity. Matter of fact, and I said before, I say again, go buy you a, a spiritual diary. A lot of women carry a diary and they write about the troubles and different things they've been through. I want you to get a spiritual diary and begin to jot down, begin to write down what God has given you so you can go back and you can revisit these promises that God has given you. And you can write down the date and where you heard it from and how God spoke to you concerning increase. Joseph is coming. Joseph is here. Okay? So that's so important that you understand the increase have arise because of your faithfulness. God is so faithful. I was outside today this morning before I went to work and I said God you're so faithful to your word I seen God do some things this week that me and my wife have been praying about for, for a while my sister, since we've been together but we've seen the evidence of it today I'm telling you that when you do the right thing and line your life up with the life of God you're going to see God be faithful to his word increase is coming and expect that and I'm telling you be excited about that what God is doing God is being God like never before okay and sometimes the enemy wants us to focus on the negative and I'm telling you, focus on the positive that God is right here, okay? So that's so important that you understand that and I want you to walk into that. There is a prophetic word for your life. You're not by yourself. You don't have to cry in the midnight hour and God don't come with a solution concerning your problem. God reads your tears and he also feels your heart. He feels the infirmity of his people. And a lot of times, and that's what God wants to do. Not only that, but God wants us to start feeling one another. He wants us to start feeling. So I know how to pray for you. You know, that's why sometimes uh, when I'm on Facebook, I'll look at your picture and I'll say, God, give me a word concerning certain people because we don't want to just walk this life and you're going through and I'm happy. I want to be able to help you break through like you helped me break through. That's about us all coming together and we understand it. And really that's tied to the lesson. Those are spiritual virtues. When you understand increase and you are grateful for that increase, you know, God been speaking to me about that we have to become more grateful and teach our children how to become grateful. Sometimes our children, we've raised them to be opposite and what they're designed to be because we didn't raise them to be grateful. We blessed them and we gave them things and some of us have empowered them, but we didn't teach them gratefulness to walk through your house. And I, as a matter of fact, let's, let's take this week, let's dedicate this week to be a week of gratefulness. I want you to this whole entire week get you a spiritual diary and, the, and then this week I want you to write down how grateful you are of what God has did for your life. Begin to write down these things and I'm telling you, you're going to be able to reflect one day on your spiritual diary and it's going to build you up. You're going to encourage yourself by how grateful you are and I'm telling you, walk through your house and tell God how you're thankful. If you have living room furniture, you should tell the Lord thank you. If you have dining room furniture, you should tell the Lord thank you. If you have an extra pantry where you can put canned goods at, you should tell the Lord thank you. If you have a car, you should tell the Lord thank you. If you got a bus pass and a transfer, you should find everything that you do possess. Don't look at what you don't possess. Whatever you do possess, put it on the list. If you have more than one washcloth, if you got more than a bar of soap or whatever you may be able to use, if you got more than one pair of glasses, more, more than one pair of shoes, uh-oh, uh, thank God. And I'm telling you, the more you are grateful, the more you are thankful, the more God will bless you and you will see increase. Uh-oh, if you're faithful over that which is little, God will make you ruler over that which is much. And I'm telling you, the gratefulness gets excited in your spirit and also it moves God that you're grateful and God will bless you because he sees the attitude of your of you receiving you have to be a grateful giver or also you have to be a grateful receiver I thank God for where he brought me from and write down your journey you may not be where you think you need to be but you're not where you were last year okay I hope you're not there there's no way you've been listening to all this teaching and you're in the same place so I'm telling you Joseph is here Joseph is coming increase is coming and that's what it's all about to display 
display the, to display the power of God and what God is doing. All right. So we just move in that. And that's for somebody. I don't know who, who it is. A lot of times God will have me preach before I preach or teach before I teach. So that's for somebody. Be grateful. Be thankful. Get your spiritual diary. Write down your life and watch God do it. Write down what God has told you. The next time you receive God, I feel the Holy Ghost. The next time you receive a prophetic word, someone speak over your life, write down that word. Next time God talk to you about something, write down what he said. Have a, have a documentation of your conversations with God and watch. And some of you, it may turn out to be a book. It may turn out to be a pamphlet. You never know. That's another thing God is doing. God is speaking to us to become more business owners, spiritual business owners. God is going to show you how to gain wealth. Uh-oh. How to gain wealth. We're becoming healthy and we're becoming wealthy. And we're becoming wise, okay? And God is doing some things with the with, with His people. He's doing some things with the righteous. He's doing some things, people who have become the just because you're following God, because justification has come through Christ, and now you're following Christ. And watch God unwind your life and everything He told you, you'll be able to see it. I praise God for it, and I hope you're praising God for what He's doing. Good to see you, James. God bless everybody, okay? All right, so important. Walking in spiritual virtues. When I'm dealing with virtues, I look at the word virtues, and the word virtue means the quality of being morally good or righteous. Morally good or righteous. Now, I want to talk about something because without Christ, it is impossible to be morally good. Okay, there's none good but the Father. So without Christ, it's impossible to be morally good. But with Christ, it is possible to be morally good because your good come from Christ. Very key. Now that's so important because there's people who think they're okay because they're morally good, but they but they have not given Christ their life. Okay, they don't have the new mindset, so they walk in according to the nature of this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the uh, the lust of the uh, flesh, the lust of the eye, and the prize of life. But they think Think they're morally good, okay? But there's none good but the Father. But once you give your life to Christ, God teaches you how to be morally good or to have spiritual virtues. Now, these virtues are so important because real kindness uh, is supposed to be or was supposed to be displayed by the saints. We teach the world what is good. We teach the world what is kind. We teach the world morally ethics, and which is so powerful. Now, man, I love this kind of teaching. The reason why this is so important is because sometimes when we give our life to Christ or because of religion or because of church, uh, we think that life is only supposed to be lived in the spiritual realm and we don't know to have virtues in the natural realms. Yes, I love praise and worship. Yes, I love the power of God and when God moves in unknown tongues, in spiritual tongues, in spiritual language. Yes, I love that. Yes, I love revelatory knowledge. Yes, I love prayer and intercession. Yes, I love that. Yes, I love the apostolic and the prophetic and all those things. But as well as I love what we call spiritual things that may come from the arena of church. I also love keeping my bathroom clean. I also love running a vacuum cleaner in my car or getting my car washed. I also love stopping at the stop sign and going by the speed limit. I also love the moral things to be kind, to smile, to say yes ma'am, yes sir. The moral things to have integrity. So if something drops on the floor and I notice it dropped out of somebody's pocket, ma'am you dropped this on the way. Those things open up the door for my wife, open up the door for the widows, help those who uh, uh, can't seem to get groceries in their car, help them carry groceries to their car. Morally good things, looking out for my neighbors, letting them know somebody in parked in front of your house. I don't know who it is. Did you see them? Those things. And don't think because God has made you spiritual that you don't have morally goods that you should display from the spiritual. Do you know that the real spiritual connection with God it should show you how to be more morally than those who are not even saved. You should have more of a kind heart. You should have more of, of great behavior. Do you know that the police system should be glad that somebody saved is on the highway? Because we know you're going to go by the rules and regulations. We know that you're not going to speak. We know you're not going to cheat on your taxes. We know these things because spirituality should lead you into having a great human life. So Jesus talks about this life and in 1 Peter, these spiritual virtues that we should have. And I'm
I'm going to show you that. So morally good without Christ is impossible because there's none good but the Father. But once you take on the Father, which by taking on the mind of Christ, because everything Jesus did, he did according to the Father, and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now the Christ is in you will show you how to live this human life divinely without, without watch this, without breaking the human laws, which means you are a better, better citizen of America when you are saved. Uh-oh, kingdom people should be better police officers, better firemen, better school teachers, better parents. Why? Because we have the mind of Christ that really gives us the real download of how to be good. Uh-oh, how to be faithful, how to be loyal, how to have integrity. I'm not just shouting and speaking in tongues, but my house is nasty. The same Holy Ghost that leads and guides me into church to lift my hands and declare blessing is the same Holy Ghost that says, wash those dishes. Uh-oh, dry them and put them up. It's the same Holy Ghost that says, light a candle in your house. It's the same Holy Ghost that says, cut your yard, the front and the back. Don't cut the front of the yard and the back is nasty. It's the same Holy Ghost that says, clean up uh, that laundry room that closes all over the where and they smell it. Oh, the same Holy Ghost teach us how to be moral beings under spirituality. Are you hearing me? So we having spiritual virtues. You'd be surprised at the people who can speak in tongues. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Who can shout you to death. Who can praise you to death. Who can preach you to death. But they nasty. Their house is nasty. They don't like this kind of preacher. Their clothes is nasty. Uh-oh. They don't have spiritual morals or virtues about themselves. They lack integrity. They lack respect. Uh-oh. I never met so many saved, nasty people in my life. Okay? And it's as crazy as if your spirituality stops at the church or it stops on Sunday morning or it stops on, on, only on Fridays and only operate. No, it should go through your life. Everything in your house, everything in your car, everything about how you treat people at the mall, at the, at, at the grocery store should reflect your spiritual life because you have spiritual virtues, spiritual morals about yourself. You're kind hearted. You give out to people. You consider other people because of the Christ that is in you. And if Christ that is in us can only be spiritual in church, then why do we need it for living? Oh, it's not religion. It's not about Sunday mornings. It's not about Friday. The very thing you learn in church should bleed into your community. It should bleed into your family. It should cause you to forgive your loved ones who have hurt you. It should cause you to treat people better. Uh-oh, it should, it should cause you to be more kind-hearted and more giving because of spiritual virtues, okay? Are you with me? Man, I'll be trying to be calm sometimes, but I get excited talking about Jesus. Okay, this is this is a, a necessity. Second Peter chapter one. And let me turn there. Let me get my Bible. Second Peter chapter one. We're going to start at verse three. If you're able to do it, if not, I'm going to read it for you. All right. Second Peter chapter one, verse three. Well, let, 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 me, let, me, let me start at verse 1. Let me teach today. We, got, we have some time. Let me teach. It's Monday. God bless everybody. Please share this on your page. Um, chapter 1 of Simon Peter, of, of, of 2 Peter, he starts out, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have attained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. What I love here, and you'll notice that Peter picked up a lot of traits from Apostle Paul. We call him Apostle Paul. You'll notice in Paul's writings that he'll start out, if you read, in, 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 in matter of fact, we can even turn there um, real quick. Let's walk through the word today. If you would turn to, and I want to go exactly where it is. Ephesians chapter 1, I'm proving a point. We just read uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, he says, Paul, comma, apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, comma, to the saints which are Ephesus, comma, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. My point is, spiritual virtues is when you know who you are in the natural man, as well as what you know who you are in the spiritual man. A lot of times we like spiritual virtues because you want to praise your position in God from the spiritual uh, perspective, but you don't want to build your natural man from the natural perspective. Listen, I don't care how gifting you have as the apostle or prophet or evangelist or pastor teacher. If you don't have spiritual virtues, your natural man, not the apostleship that God has given 
given you is a gift, but who you are. Like my name is Robert James Duvall Jenkins. That's what my mother named me, Robert James Duvall Jenkins. My job is not to go and make people respect me by saying, call me Apostle Robert Jenkins or Apostle Robert James Duvall Jenkins or Apostle Jenkins. Apostle is the gifting I was given. That's not the name I was given from my mother. I have a natural name that is attached to me according to the citizens of the United States. And when I put an electric bill, they're not going to send the electric bill in the apostle's name. They're not going to send the gas bill in the apostle's name. My driver's license does not have the apostle because according to the United States of America, your name is Robert James Duvall Jenkins and we're going to put Robert and maybe your middle initial on your name. That's what your mother called you. Now, the apostleship comes from you hear me? Comes from God. That's the gifting that God has given you. It's not to, uh, to deny, but your whole job is not to make people respect it because you want to function as apostle and not just be labeled as apostle. We lack spiritual virtues when we have to always hide behind our spirituality. Spiritual virtues understand who I am in the flesh as well as who I am in the spirit. So Paul starts out by saying, I'm Paul, I, even though I am the pastor of this church, I'm I'm the pastor of this church. I'm writing a letter to my own church, but I'm telling you when you read the letter, I can introduce myself as Paul because Paul, uh, I understand who he is and, and, and what God has did for him. Oh man, I feel the Holy Ghost. And when you understand these things, you can walk in your natural as well as walk in your spiritual because my spiritual makes me a better Paul. And listen, if you don't ever deal with the Paul in your life or the Robert in your life or the Sandy of your life, it is going to be that natural man that it's going to mess up the representation of the spiritual man. So you have to be very careful that the whole purpose of having spiritual virtues is so that I'll be a better Robert. I'll be a better Robert to Sandy, my wife. I'll be a better Robert to my grandkids. I'll be a better Robert on my job. I'll be a better Robert because spirituality helps me in my natural, in my humanity. So we have to understand it and have spiritual virtues. Paul, Peter starts out by saying, Simon Peter, I understand where God brought me from and I have that. And most of the time, we don't allow spiritual virtues to operate in our natural man. Oh my God, you can preach. Oh my God, as the apostle, I love you. Oh, oh as, the, as the pastor, you are awesome. But as Robert, or as Sandy, or as David, or as Maria, or as Joe, or whatever your name may be, you are terrible because you, you have not allowed the spiritual virtues to deal with your humanity. And you are high underneath your gift when God wants spiritual virtues that come out of you and you know who you are when you can announce uh, I want you to meet somebody what's your name my name is Mary and you know you are evangelist but you don't have to announce that you are the evangelist because the function of that gift will display itself it don't need you to advertise it it don't need you to defend it because I have spiritual characters and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do right I'm gonna be nice at the restaurant when a lady brought me the wrong meal uh, the lady didn't bring me the right drink but I have spiritual virtues that I can display patience, uh oh, I can display kindness, and I can be sweet even though she's messing up my order because I have spiritual, uh, 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 spiritual virtues. And one day she may come to a church or hear me preach, and she remember that lady who was so polite even though she didn't do a good job as a waitress because of spiritual virtues. I want to know how well are you in your humanity, not how well you are in your gift. I understand the power of a gift, and you can preach and be the most nasty person in the world. Don't think because you can preach more well or teach more well or sing real well or, or minister real well that that mean that your spiritual virtues are being practiced. Uh oh, your gift don't need you to do what it does. Uh oh, but your whole thing is to have the life of Christ. Spiritual virtues is about how you live in. It's a bad thing that people only like you as long as you in your gift. But when you are outside of the pulpit, you are nasty, you are a gossiper, you are a liar, you are deceived. Deceitful, uh, outside of your gifting, uh, you are disrespectful, you are arrogant, all these things because you don't know how to have spiritual virtues in your living. Are you hearing me? And when you understand spiritual virtues, you don't have to always declare your gifting. When you go to Walmart, uh, the lady has on there Betty. Her name tag says Betty. Uh, she don't have to have cashier Betty. You know she's cashier Betty because she's behind the cashier. And when she comes on who she are, she might be in the back room next week. She might be in somewhere else next week. And now they can use her anywhere because they're not looking for a cashier. They're looking for somebody making themselves available for the position.
Spiritual virtue allows you to humble yourself and say, Lord, I just want to be a vessel. However you want to use me. I don't want to be the orange juice glass. I don't want to be the Kool-Aid glass. I want to be a glass. And if you happen to want to use Kool-Aid today or orange juice or whatever water, I'll make myself available for however you want to use me today. That's, the, that's spiritual virtues when you can take off your collar and still clean bathrooms. That's spiritual virtues when you can put down your dignity and still rob with somebody who may not have the, the type of card that you have. Uh oh, spiritual dignity when you can visit people and they may not have the house as well as you have yours, but you have enough humility to help them get to where they need to be because before you knew who you were as the apostle or prophet or evangelist or pastor or teacher or, or, or extraordinary or before you made six figures or before you had a, a master's degree, what was your name? Uh oh, and have you mastered your name? Because you ain't, if you haven't dealt with the natural man, you can hide in the pulpit, you can hide on the stage, but your private life one day will embarrass you. Your cane will kill your, kill your Abel if you don't deal with the cane that's, uh oh, that's in all of us. Okay, very key. So he says, Simon Peter, he deals with who he is naturally, and that's spiritual virtue when you're honest about yourself. Most of the time, our lives get embarrassed when we have not dealt with the natural side of us first. Spiritual, I am, I, I am, I am less impressed with people's gifts than I've ever been in life, okay? And I heard uh, T.D. Jake say this, and I thought it was a powerful statement. He said he's not impressed with preaching because if you're preaching something, you got it two ways. From God, and he knows him, and from books, and he can read. He's more impressed with how you live your life. God wants us to live a life of Christianity and not live the labels of Christianity. Anybody can wear the labels, but are you living the life? God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here, Okay. So he's Simon Peter. So spiritual virtues help us. And unless, and God, I feel the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you something. I know what it is as an individual to have an awesome gift and to be praised for that awesome gift. And you're miserable because you can't get your natural life together. You have to come up with gimmicks. You have to spray yourself because, before you go to church because everybody knows what smell that you're still smoking, even though you got to work. I know what it is for you. You have to hide and you can't let people come over your house without calling because there's some things that doesn't represent, uh-oh, where you going. I know what it is for the walking people's cars. I, I've been in churches where the evangelist just preach a powerful word and we walk into a car and she hoping that you walk away because when she opened up her door, her, 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 her car is more nastier than the people she just uh, dealt with at altar call. She should have had the first altar call at her car. I know what it is when you don't have a spiritual virtues, but you, you're hiding and operate. Man, this is helping somebody. In your gifts, you want to have spiritual virtues that your house is clean, your car is clean, how you treat people, your attitude. You're not nasty. You're not arrogant. And at the same time, still understand the call of the apostleship on your life. Simon Peter. Comma. Next thing he says, a servant. Spiritual virtues help us walk in servanthood. We have allowed gifts to, call, to bring us out of the will of God. We have become so arrogant because God used us. We have become so disrespectful because God has a calling on our life that we have forgot about servanthood. And it's the one who serves that become the greatest. Uh oh, Jesus said, unless I wash your feet, you're not worthy to be in the kingdom. When we're going to find leadership that's still willing to wash feet. Uh oh, and I ain't talking about just natural feet, willing to clean what you walk upon, willing to deal with the dirtiest. And at that time, they walk with sandals, so a lot of dust got on their got on their feet. It means that the, the feet was open to an environment that can cause them to be dirty on their journey. What leadership is willing to watch the thing you've been through on your journey? Okay, this is very key, the humility of it. But we get so we get so arrogant. I don't know why God is leading me here, but we get so much. Sometimes it bothers me when I go to church and we see that the pastor has a parking space for the pastor so that he don't have to park way back in the church. He got to get up close. But there are people in wheelchairs that has a, that don't have a parking space. Uh oh, uh oh, are you hearing me? And, and I'm not trying to pick on parking space, but I am picking on what is the attitude of leadership? Because even though one pastor may do that and we may understand that he's humble and he'll give up his parking space for somebody else but now we are teaching the young ministers who coming up who don't have any virtues who's been watching us that automatically feel they have some 
entitlements to a parking space up front when you only been preaching three weeks because you think it's behind and you and it's more important to you to have a parking space than it is for you to serve. Uh oh, we're not teaching uh, servanthood anymore, and because we're not teaching servanthood anymore, starting with leadership, this is why we don't have any spiritual virtues in the house of God. When you walk in spiritual virtues, you walk in humility. One who loses life shall gain it. I'm looking for a humble apostle. I'm looking for a humble prophet. I'm looking for humble. I have a problem with leadership. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. God is, he pushes out here today. That wants to come to church last, but wants to stand up when half of the service is halfway over. Now you want to be celebrated. You come in when you want to. You're not part of praise and worship. You're not part of the prayer. But you want everybody to stay awake while you're preaching. But you was not awake for anybody else because you weren't even there at the church. Because we don't have any servanthood. And now we're so caught up into all these titles. And we're caught up into all these callers. And we're tied up into all these jurisdictions. And I'm the bishop and I am the chief apostle. But there's no servanthood. And when there is no servanthood, you lack virtue in your calling. You lack true spiritual moral quality about yourself. How? When your gift was watered, but your character was never developed. Why are you watering gifts to grow but undeveloping character. We're undeveloping people who have a heart for God because when you have a heart for God, you will have a heart for people. Uh-oh, you know that church service is not about you. Your anointing was not to draw crowds. Your anointing was to destroy yokes. Your calling was to help people come out of bondage, not to make slaves out of them. But we don't have people who have a, a servant heart. They want to go from being in the clubs to being an apostle Overnight, no one teach them virtues of how to serve, how to listen, how to help, how to support, uh oh, how to have eyes to see. You need to be a seer before you speak, uh oh, to be able to see some things and seeing come from being quiet, from observing. But we like those virtues, so we have gifted people who will steal your money, gifted people who will manipulate you, gifted people who will never come to your house and pray for you, never come to the hospital and visit the sick. Oh, because they're too big for that. And now we got this new thing going on. I don't even know if it's new. That people coming in and they got eight armor bears and you only got 13 members. Oh, oh, you, you can't walk alone. Oh, there's no servanthood. And now you want people to serve you, but you have never served anybody else. And you're not even willing to serve anybody else. And matter of fact, the truth be told, if you have armor bears, you should be serving them because the least is the greatest and the greatest is the least. Oh, so where is the spiritual virtue? Virtues that comes out of these talent and it seems like knowledge has puffed us up so the more wiser we get the more knowledge we get the more degrees to get the more we leave real true spiritual virtues are you hearing me but he said my name is Simon Peter yeah they don't know if he wrote this book or not I believe he did but he said my name is Simon Peter I'm a servant so my name first servanthood second then he says and apostle of Jesus Christ. He didn't say apostle Peter. You'll notice that they don't call themselves apostle Paul or apostle Peter. They say, in other words, I am who I am with my mother naming. I have a call, which is servanthood. The greatest is the least, the servant. The greatest title we ever can have. Two greatest titles of the same coin, opposite head. is servanthood and sonship. Those are the greatest names you should understand. This is my beloved son on whom I'm well pleased. We understand the fivefold ministry is symbolic of Christ himself. But Christ don't call himself the chief apostle. I'm a son of God. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm a son of the most high. He said, I count it not robbery to be equal with God, but I humble myself even unto death, even the death of the cross. Where is the humility, the spiritual virtue in all of these great callings? Woo! So he says, I'm Simon Peter, comma, a servant, comma, and apostle. That's my gifting. And Paul would say, called to be apostle. He understands that's a gifting. That's not an office. There's two offices in the Bible, the office of a bishop and the office of a deacon. And anytime you can be put in an office, you can be put out of office. But a gift is given to you from God. But that is not who you are. That is what you do. That is your function. Like I play drums. And some people say, I am a drummer, but really you are not a drummer. You are a man who plays drums. You may have a drum mentality, a consciousness, which teaches you how to operate in the gift or operate in the talent, 
But God ain't trying to save a drummer. He's trying to save the soul that plays. Okay? Man, I feel the Holy Ghost here. So watch this. So he says, Simon Peter, come up. You just coming on? Share this on your page. We in 2 Peter chapter 1. Simon Peter, deal with who you are. Simon was the name he was given. Jesus said, upon this rock, your name should be called Peter. Upon this rock, I should be with my church. Understand your transformation. True spiritual virtues are grateful for where God has brought them from. They use their past as a resume that leads them to where God has called them to be. Because God changed my name. I understand that. But sometimes we allow the transformation to transfer us out of a place of humility. Be very careful when you don't hold the virtue of humility. You should be more known for being humble. You should be more known for being quiet. You should be no, more known for uh, 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 keeping the peace and making peace, becoming peacemakers than you are for the kind of clothes that you wear. If people are talking about how well you dress over, how well you treat senior citizens, you're lost somewhere. See, we don't even hear rumors about how great pastors take care of the senior citizens or the widows. We don't even hear about that. Every now and then we do one or two events a year to justify us taking care of, of the world. Of one, once or twice a year we do something and we feed the homeless. What you do the other 364 days of the year? If it's 365 days in a year, what are you doing for 364? Where are you known for humility? When you walk into a place, what spirit walks with you? Spiritual virtue should walk with you. The spirit of peace, of love, joy, long suffering, fruit of the spirit, those things. Uh, temperament should walk with you. Okay? The, the humility should walk with you. You should be praying for the spirit of humility. That the spirit of God, the presence of God should humble you. How do you walk in the presence? Matter of fact, it's a lack of discernment. You can't discern the awesomeness of God and still think you somebody. You somebody because of him, not uh, 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 without him it is, it is his presence that make us bow down before the king uh oh woe is me a man of unclean lips when God comes in so if I'm always walking in the presence I'm always walking in humility one of the reasons why we don't have spiritual virtues because you're not walking with the spiritual one because the virtues come out of him man I feel the Holy Ghost we're teaching today bless your name oh God watch this Simon Peter one, servant, two, apostle of Jesus Christ. Then he said, I'm right to them who have like precious faith. Like precious faith. We must begin to thank God for this virtue that I'm calling faith. Do you understand the power of faith? It is the access into a realm. And it's also the access in which a realm can enter to you. By faith I can receive. By faith, I can receive a, a divine word from God. By faith, I can receive a divine touch. By faith, a spiritual, eternal word can enter into time by faith and remain eternal while it's in time. By faith. Oh, but also by faith, I can speak to a mountain and tell it to move. It's precious because I have faith. This faith, if I have faith as a grain of a mustard seed. Not a mustard seed, but a grain. Of a mustard seed, I can speak some things. By faith, the world was framed. I can frame the world. I can frame the world that God has designed for me by faith. So it's precious. So Peter is writing. He said, I'm writing to those who understand this precious faith. I'm Simon Peter. I'm a servant called to be an apostle. I'm writing to do have precious faith. We have, we have allowed the devil to trick us to not appreciate this virtue called faith. Do you understand the power of faith? It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We can go into it. The word is is a mathematical word, which means equal to. So 2 plus 2 is 4, which means equal to 4. So 2 plus 2 is on the left side. 4 is on the right side. And whatever you have an equal there or is there, whatever is on this side is equal to this side. He says faith is equal to, is, or equal to the substance of things hoped for. That word substance. In the, in the Greek means legal deed, pious paper. He says faith is the actual.
your legal deeds to whatever you hope for. Do you know when you have a legal deed in your hand, you all marry because of the deed. You own the property. So if you have a deed to a car, you own the car. The car can be in California. But if the deed has your name in it, it's your car regardless of where it is because your name is on the deed. He said faith literally is equal to the to the legal deed of whatever you hope for uh oh and the evidence of things not seen it's the evidence of things not seen so when you need evidence of something you can't see you see it by faith that is precious Faith has allowed people to have access to righteousness who was not righteous. So Abraham gained righteousness by faith. Rahab is in this faith series even though she had some things in her life. But by faith she was able to obey God. So there's a lot of things that come by faith. We have gotten away from preaching faith or we try to use faith as a magic wand. Uh oh A magic wand to do what we want but we really don't respect faith because faith come by hearing. That's how it come. It come by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. Uh oh, how can you hear without a preacher? How can you preach unless he's been sent? This precious faith that we've been given. Access to able to receive. You can be healed. You can have sugar diabetes in your body. But by faith you can receive healing. Uh oh, you can have a tumor in your brain. But by faith you can be healed. Uh oh, you can have an issue of blood for 12 long years. But by faith, oh, uh oh, uh oh, your blood will dry up and guess what? The fountain of God's, his virtue, he said, my virtue was drawn out. She poured on his virtue. Oh, she got healed because she tapped into the virtue of Jesus. And I'm telling you, this is a virtue. We got to get back to people who walk by faith, live by faith, believe by faith, prophesy by faith because they heard a word from God. This virtue, we've gotten away from faith preachers. Faith, we got away from faith teaching. Oh, teaching on the power of faith. Why we need that? Because we're caught up in robes and Mercedes and gator shoes and new glasses and, 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 and big buildings, but we're not walking by faith. I don't want to know uh, uh, that, that, that your church is large. I want to know by faith, 35 people of your congregation got healed of AIDS. Uh oh, so when I walk into your church, I notice a lot of people here were struggling with homosexuality. But by faith, they no longer struggling. They got healed of AIDS. Uh oh, I notice you got some people here that get shot and the news said they did, they died. But you went and, and, and prayed for them right at the hospital and they rose again. This guy said he was dead. This woman over here said she was dead. Because by faith, that's the virtue that the church should be walking in. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. That virtue, he said, this Precious faith that we have. Woo! Oh my God. Do you understand that Simon Peter, the word Peter means petrol. It really represents faith. By faith, you get into the kingdom. You have access to the kingdom by faith. So it's precious. That's a virtue. <clears throat> I want to be known by the faith. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to be known by the faith that I walk in. How I'm able to hear, how I'm able to move mountains, how I'm able to speak those things as not as though they were. By the faith, that's a virtue. And I pray right now under the Holy Ghost that God, you return us to true qualities of Christianity, true qualities of the Christ. Give us back virtues that represent you. Return us back to faith that we lay hands on ourselves and we shall recover. You pray the prayer of faith and he shall be healed. Who's preaching the prayer of faith? You know, Benny Hinn was preaching faith for a long time, and, and Hank, uh, uh, not Hank Hennigraph, but um, other preachers back in the day, they was preaching that, uh, uh, um, Smalls, a different other preacher was preaching the faith thing, and I'm, I'm trying to name them, but I'm just hearing so much in my spirit. And, 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 and they, a powerful move of God came from this, this faith, but we've gotten away from those virtues. We're more concerned about what car we drive. And I know it seems like I pick on material things, but I pick on the things that has driven us away from spiritual virtues. Woo! He says, to them that has like precious faith with us, through the righteousness of God, how do they get faith? Through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. We in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Another virtue is grace. See you'll notice that these type of teachings don't get that much celebration. 
We don't want to hear. We want to be a blessed, highly favored. I have no problem with spiritual uh, 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 economics or spiritual blessings. But I want to prosper even as my soul prosper. I don't want money to take me out of the will of God. If it's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom, I got to be very careful when God gives me riches if I don't have virtues that can handle the riches. Grace and peace be multiplied. When the last time a pastor prayed over you and prayed that grace and peace be multiplied? We're trying to multiply houses and multiply cars and multiply business. But how, how, many, how many times in your life can you say, my peace has been multiplied? The grace of God in my life has been multiplied. I want the virtues that grace, man, he's more grace than he ever been. The Bible says, season your words with grace. Oh, I want to be graceful in God. That, should, that gives me a character. I've always liked a man who was a gentleman and spoke, and you know, he mean what he say and say what he mean. That comes through the grace of God. The law, the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. How are you so spiritual, but your grace is not multiplied? Grace in your own life and grace how you see others. The peace of God should be in your life. You should walk with a calmness knowing that you can trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean out into your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct that path there's a peace virtue that we lack yes we can shout yes we can sing yes we can dance yes we can preach but where's our peace being multiplied the pass of all understanding that we can go through storms but nothing interrupts our peace we sleep like Jesus in the boat because we have peace grace is multiplied so we sin abound grace much more abound we walk in the grace the empowerment of God I'm I'm not talking about grace that helps you get out of sin. I'm talking about grace that keeps you away from it. Oh, the grace be multiplied. When Peter was praying this to the church, he said, I'm praying that your grace be multiplied, that you multiply greater in the power to be able to stay away from lust. Because of grace, I don't have to fall into pornography. I don't have to go back into old bondages. I don't visit old thought life. Why? Because the grace of God has been multiplied. That's the virtue you want when you've been multiplied. With grace a times grace times grace times grace we go from glory to glory oh we go from grace to grace we go from move because it should be multiplied peace should be multiplied you should be praying Lord multiply peace in my life that when children walk in my house they feel peace my job feels peace oh because my peace have been multiplied and I, I know it's not just multiplied for me for me to be a blessing to others Oh, he said, I'm praying that your grace and your peace be multiplied. Those are virtues, spiritual virtues. When a man can walk in grace, he walks in empowerment. He can say no to lust. He can turn his head and turn his eyes away from sin. He don't have to get mad and cuss people out. He don't have to find himself doing something that is ungodly and unrighteous. because Not because he's better than, but because he walks in his multiplied grace. Oh, he walks in his multiplied peace. This woman has so much peace on her life. What helps her make better decisions. She's not emotional. Oh, she doesn't react. She proact. How were you able to take your time and respond to that problem? How were you able to calm yourself down? And as a matter of fact, not even allow yourself to be risen up because my, I have a virtue that I live in. I have a virtue that I walk through. That's how I was able to raise six kids by myself. That's how I was able to forgive my kid's father who who never was a father in their life because my grace and peace was multiplied. That's how I'm able to forgive my father for what he did, my uncle for what he did because grace. Listen, we don't have powerful characters in God because the real virtues, spiritual virtues, are not being. We're not moving in advancement. I'm going to get to it probably by Wednesday. Add to your faith this. Add to your virtue this. Add. You should be adding some spiritual things to your life. Some spiritual virtue should be added. You shouldn't just be speaking in tongues every year, shouting every year, singing every year, preaching every year, making more money. But you're making more money and you want to raise on your money, but you don't want to raise in your peace level. You don't want to raise in your love level. Oh, you should ask God for a raise in your joy level, a raise in spiritual virtues qualities that make you an awesome woman that your that your that your students at the school say I love this teacher because she has something about her. there's some virtues in this teacher there's some virtues in this police officer there's a virtue in this mayor there's a virtue in this president uh oh we lack spiritual
spiritual virtues to be able to carry spiritual principles out in human form. Simon Peter, I'm a servant, but I pray that your grace be multiplied. I'm not a true apostle. If all I want you to do is get more money so you can pay more tithes, if I'm really an apostle and apostolic and prophetic and a pastor and a teacher, I want your, your virtues. I want you to grow in the knowledge of God. And the more you know about Christ, you can be humble as a lamb. Oh my God. You know how to lay your life down for other people. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Are you hearing me? He said, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. And I speak now from a permission of the apostolic code of my life. I release on this teaching right now, grace and peace will be multiplied in your life. I don't care where you're sleeping, you're going to sleep in peace. I don't care where you work, you're going to work in peace. You're going to have the empowerment of grace. I release it now. I agree with the Holy Ghost that the grace and peace, this spiritual virtue, will be in your life. And you're going to deal with your enemies differently because your grace and peace has been multiplied. In the name of Jesus, receive it and watch a new level of living come in your life. Woo! God, we thank you. We thank you for grace and peace. He says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. The more you know about God, the more peace you receive. The more you understand God, the more grace is received. Are you hearing me? You ought to be blessing God right now. The empowerment. I'm going to teach you about the whole power of grace. We have used grace to get us out of sin, but we haven't used grace to keep us out of sin. Not to get us out, but to keep us out. Grace, the empowerment. Okay? It's the empowerment. Walking in grace. It's really walking in Christ. It's walking in His anointing. Christos. Christ, the anointed one. When you walk in the anointed one, literally walk in God. If anybody be in Christ, in Christ, it's walking in that anointing. It is the empowerment to be your best. It is the empowerment for success. It is the empowerment of, of, of spiritual inheritance. I'm going to talk about it if I get to it today. Okay, very key. Watch this. Grace and peace be multiplied. You should be praying for multiplication of spiritual virtues. Lord, before you give me another coat, give me another coat of praise. Give me the coat uh, uh, of gladness. Give me the coat uh, of the garment of praise. Give me the coat of intercession. Before you give me another pair of natural shoes, give me the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. God, let me put on the whole armor of God. I want to carry those virtues. I want to be known for the fruit of the Spirit operating in my life. That He's so lovable. He's so forgiving. And my spirit is temperate. I have temperament. Self-control. Self-control. That virtue will cause me not to overeat. That virtue will cause me not to be greedy. That virtue would cause me not to be lustful. The reason why the enemy still have access in your life because you have not matured in virtues and spiritual virtues. I'm going to show you, God, matter of fact, let, let, me, let me take you there and then we'll teach about it. We'll teach about it. Watch this. Let me see where it is. Go to verse 8. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. This is the end. I'll probably get to this Friday and I'll break it down. But I want to give it to you now. Watch this. For if these things be in you, if these spiritual virtues be in you and abound, if they stay and they live, they live in you, these spiritual virtues I'm talking about. He said, if these things be in you and they abound, that they may that they that they make you that you shall neither be barren. You are barren. You can't produce certain spiritualities because you don't have these virtues. Sometimes women in the Bible were barren. They couldn't give birth to a, a child. Okay, how much uh, of, of intimacy might have went on between a husband and a wife? She wasn't. She she was barren. She couldn't able to hold a child. Her, the, the eggs could not be fertilized. But God says you are barren because you don't have spiritual virtues. But if you keep these spiritual virtues that it talks about in Second, I mean First Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 6. If you keep these things, he says, you won't be barren. Watch this. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. God, he said, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. We have unfruitful saints because you don't have any virtue. 
You don't have any virtue to be fruitful. You don't have love to produce anything. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, oh, grace, peace, all these things. Servanthood, humility. Woo! Watch this. Watch this. If, you, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you should neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacks these things is blind. God, I'm going to get to it Friday. I, uh, I don't want to say I swear, but I'm telling you, I, 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 I'm, I really want to break down that when you don't have these virtues, you are blind. You're delusional. You're walking in circles. You're walking in Gilgal. Gilgal means circles. You're going in circles. You're not advancing up. You're not advancing over. You're just walking around. Walk around. He says, if you like these things, uh, the, he said, but he that likes these things is blind, cannot see afar off, doesn't have any vision. Some people can't see up close, like I need my glasses to read. I can see afar off, but up close I need my glasses, so they call reading glasses. Some people can't see afar off. He says, when you don't have these virtues, you're blind or you can't see afar off. You don't have any vision. You're always concerned about today because you don't see how God already made a way for you today and tomorrow. So you're always in a worry status because you don't have any virtues that can sustain you. The virtue of trusting in the Lord is not there. Man, I'm telling you, this word is rich today. I wish I had people and pastors that would preach to me this kind of word that God is preaching to you, to you today. Oh, my God. He said, he that likes these things is blind, cannot see it for all, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Do you know without virtues, your old sins rise up as if you never, you never got purged from them? He says, he says, if you don't have these things, you're blind, you can't see it far off, and you have forgotten. Your memory is no longer a help to you because you have forgotten that you've been purged. You forgot that God did it on Calvary. You forgot the power of Jesus when he said it is finished because you didn't take on any spiritual virtues. Now, we're going to pick up tomorrow at verse 3. Verse 3, and it says this, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. I want to just stop right there. I can't wait for tomorrow. Man, I'm so excited about what God is going to say to us tomorrow. Watch this. He says, when you understand spiritual virtues... According as his divine power, God gave you power to become the sons of God. He came into his own, his own received them not, but as many as received him, to them he gave power, authority, authority. He gives us two types of power. He gives us ecclesia and he gives us dunamis. He gives us Matthew chapter 10 to cast out demons. That's the legal the power. That's like a badge. And then he gives us dunamis power. That's like a gun. So a police officer has a badge. That's his legal authority, which means he's been invested by the United States government that if you ever get into trouble, he has a legal right by having that badge to arrest you. But if you don't want to respect that badge, he can pull that gun out and he can shoot you and the government will back him up because he's been legalized by the government to be a police Okay, very key. So God says, when I send you out as apostles, I'm not going to send you out without authority. Uh oh, and I'm going to give you authority so that you can have power. Now that power is given to us, but the power is dangerous when you don't have virtues. He says, so, according to the power. Now the whole purpose of the power that was given for you was to give you virtues. See, do you understand something? That, that, that the power comes from God. The authority that comes from God is what gives you the authority to take a bath. Oh, it's to have virtues of cleanliness. Look, somebody made up a scripture. It's not in the Bible, but it is a good one. They used to say cleanliness is next to godliness. Well, that's not a scripture, but it is a good principle because you're not going to be next to God and be dirty because the Bible says he don't do well in unclean things. Uh oh, so, so the Holy Ghost got to be, make sure that the temple of the Holy Ghost is clean. So there's virtues. So he says this power that I gave you is going to give you virtues. Watch this. I'm not making this up. This is in the Bible. So according to verse 3, according to his divine power, his divine nature, and has given us all things that pertain to life. What pertains to life? I got to eat in life. I got to walk in life. I got to worship in life. I got to go to work in life. I got to pay bills in life. 
I got to be able to cut my grass in life. All these things are part of life. I got people in life. I got things in life. According to my spiritual nature of being in Christ, according to the power that's given to me, that when I was born again, I just wasn't born again just to be spiritual in church. I just was not born again to shout on Friday night services. I just thought I was born again to attend revivals. My born again experience has given me everything in that experience of pertaining to life and then it says, and godliness, which means you can't make godliness life. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Godliness is not life. Godliness is a part of life. And everything I gave you is your spiritual virtues are the for life. You should be able to enjoy yourself on a Friday when it's not church time and those virtues are still be in place. You should not only speak to people in church, but you don't speak to them at the mall or at the store. Where is the power that release all things you need to be a kind person at the mall? To smile, to, 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 to how you doing? God bless you and mean it to pray for you, to intercede, to listen, to hug, oh, to say thank you, oh, spiritual virtues, woo, he says has given us all things, don't tell me you don't know how, I don't know how to get along with people, I just don't like people, Jenkins, I heard so many prophets tell me, I just don't like people, you know, I, I give them a word and I go home, how you don't like people? He give you all things that, that pertain to life, like in people it pertain to life and godliness. And I'm going to show you more in the scriptures tomorrow that deals with this authority, this virtue, this, this mindset that has equipped you for all things pertaining life. Are you a great Christian in the church but a terrible individual outside? There's some entertainers. I, I, I've been in the music industry all my life. And I've had the privilege to, to spend time with great entertainers. And there's some entertainers that I met that I wish I have only would have know, known them from the CD. I've never met so many people who, who are arrogant but have a great gift. Where are the virtues of Jesus? I've never met so many spiritual people that unless you speak it in tongues with them, that they don't, they can't enjoy it. You can't take them for a ride. You can't say, "Let's go get ice cream." Listen, I give you life and life more abundantly. You should be able to enjoy your Saturdays. And, and no one loves to pray as much as I love to pray. I pray all the time. I love, I love going into the depths of God. But I like sitting on the lake and fishing, and enjoying life, and not feel like I'm sinning, and not feel like I'm worldly. And still contain the same anointing on the fishing boat that I do at the altar call. I'm just as anointed at the grocery store as I am in a convention. I'm just as powerful in the backseat of a car as I am in any ministry. Because the virtues that God has given me, everything I need to pertaining to life and godliness is in that power power. I enjoy cleaning up my own car as much as I do helping people clean up their own life. I enjoy being ministered to as well as I enjoy ministering to others. Some people are only excited when they're doing the ministry. As long as they're dominating the conversation, as long as they're doing all the preaching, but they'll never visit another church and let somebody preach to them. They'll never let nobody minister to them. they always laying hands on somebody else. Nobody's ever laying hands on them. Where are your virtues that you can't be a serve? That somebody can't serve you? That you can't be a servant? Are you always the king? Are you always the Lord? Because the Bible says the least shall be the greatest. Can you humble yourself? That's a virtue. Do you desire virtues more than you desire things? What is your prayer life? Lord, I can't wait to get out this house. I can't wait to get, get, get out of this raggedy car. I can't wait to make more money. Or are you saying, Lord, I want you to multiply my peace, multiply my grace, multiply my temperance. I want to be able to take so much and look like I'm being abused and I'm smiling. Can you die with a smile instead of, instead of being saved for frown? See, virtues. 
And I'm going to talk about those virtues. I'm probably going to get to them maybe Thursday or Friday. We'll get to that verse 5 when it says add to your, add to your this virtues, add faith and add, add to your faith virtues and add to your virtue knowledge and add to your knowledge. There should be some adding that you're adding. And I'm going to show you how when it comes to virtues, these are things that you must add. He's telling you to add them. He's not saying I'm going to add them. He said you must add them. There's some things that we must add. When was the last time you added to salvation? I know you got saved. I remember the day I got saved. It was on a Thursday night. I know. Well, have you added anything to it since you've been saved? Are you just, are you in the same spiritual level you was last year? I told you Smith Wigglesworth said, if you're the same today as you was yesterday, you have backslid. You have to, there's virtues in God. Do you understand there's people who are going to meet you who would never come to your church. They'll never read your Bible, but they'll read your life. They should be able to read your virtues and want to serve your God. You know the real reason why Pharaoh became so wicked? The Bible says that Pharaoh knew not the God of Joseph. He knew not the God of Joseph. Pharaoh became wicked because he never was able to experience the God of Joseph. He didn't say that Pharaoh knew not God. He said he knew not the God of Joseph. Joseph carried some virtues. Joseph was put in a pit by his own brothers and he never complained about his brothers. He went to prison and he didn't complain about being in the prison. And then when he healed, then he gets in the palace and his brothers come. He makes sure that his brothers have enough gold to go back and get their dad so he can see his dad. Even though they the one told their dad he was dead because he had some virtues. And those virtues came out of his tribulations, but they were there. And he began to add upon him as he grew. As he grew. See? There's some virtues. So he, he became so strong. You know in the Bible time, you can be so into God that they'll name the days after you. In the days of Noah. In the days of Abraham. God would even introduce himself sometimes. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He didn't say I'm the, I'm the God of the prophet. I'm the God of, of, of the apostolic chief anointing. He named who they was as individuals. The virtues that you carry, God put the anointing upon. Woo! You become a Paul and God will anoint it. You become a Peter and God will anoint it. That anointing comes with that. But we want to be, we want to have the titles without having the virtues. See? You, your days should be in the days of Jenkins, man. Man, people's getting healed and delivered, man. He was empowering people. That's virtues. See, that's, that's bigger than giftings. Giftings don't need you to operate. You can operate in gifts and end up in hell. He said there are people in hell who said, didn't I cast out demons in your names? Didn't I do this in your name? And he's going to say, yeah, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. For I never knew you. We were never intimate, but you used my name. But virtues come out of the knowledge of Christ. So we pray for a part two tomorrow. Lord, have your way. Thank you for the opening of our eyes. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for maturity. We felt the push in our back. We felt the push in our belly. We felt the push in our feet. Thank you, Lord, for elevation. For we walk in spiritual virtues. We bless your name for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Be blessed. Put the word out. Please share this on your page. Tell people that we're learning how to walk in spiritual virtues. We're adding to our life. So that we can become more like Christ. When Jesus returns, we shall be like him. How close are you right now? You never know when he's going to return. Are you ready? Not ready for the rapture. Are you ready to be like him? God bless you.